The wellness revolution starts now. Welcome to the program. My name is Brianna Gregory, pharmacist and physician liaison with Physicians Preference Pharmacy. And today we are going to have a conversation about a compound that we make at Physicians Preference called oxytocin. And this is one that our body makes on our own. So I'm really excited to talk about what it can do for us when we dose it through medication form mm -hmm. and customized doses. Okay, so let's start. And let's start with the um, simple question. What is oxytocin? So oxytocin is a hormone, again, that your body naturally makes, made and released by the brain and sends out signals to the rest of the body of how to function. Hormones in our body function as messengers. That's what they do and tell the body how to function appropriately. And so when something gets off kilter, that's when we know we need to go back in and replace or balance some of those hormones. And oxytocin falls into that bucket. So oxytocin is great for a lot of things. We usually think of it as the love hormone. That's how it gets labeled a lot of times because it is what our body naturally makes after intercourse, after touching or hugging someone, after petting a dog, mm. all of these things, that physical touch is what helps our body to release oxytocin. It also helps to manage mood for those that kind of that feel good, mm -hmm. right? That comes from that hormone release. And it balances out our stress hormone, cortisol. Mm. So it does a lot of other things in the body, but those are our, the primary jobs that it has that when a guest shows up, we call our patients guests, right? When they show up to us and they present a certain way with certain health challenges, those are the main reasons why we would give oxytocin back to them to improve their wellness. Okay. So that kind of goes right into my next question. What type of guests would you recommend oxytocin for? So we're really seeing a lot of people not recovering from loss of smell or taste mm. and a lot of people that have persistent headaches. And I will say that, again, our body makes oxytocin on its own. So this compound has been around forever. But more recently, that is that is the type of guess that we're starting to use more and more oxytocin in. So when we think about why a headache persists, it could be stress-induced partially. Mm -hmm. It could be due to the vasodilation or the widening of the blood vessels that brings blood flow to the brain, but it causes kind of that pulsation that causes a headache. Mm -hmm. Oxytocin works on the vessels, so it helps to restore the vascular tone or basically the size of the blood vessels so that we don't have a lot of blood rushing to the head. And also it nourishes and heals the nerve endings in the nose. Hmm. So a lot of times what will happen when we have a loss of taste or smell is it can either be due to actual nerve death at that area or the blood supply is compromised. Hmm. The blood vessels are compromised that feed the nerves in the area. So we either have to fix the blood issue or fix the nerve issue. And oxytocin works in both of those areas. It can actually help to restore some of those sensations. Okay. So you did mention some of the symptoms that you might, uh, that a guest or a patient might um, experience. What are some of the other symptoms or conditions that we would use oxytocin for? So we discuss with our guests a lot hormone balance. Mm -hmm. And typically that's the primary bucket of symptoms that someone presents to us with here. And one of those main concerns is going to be adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout, or basically your body has been so stressed for so long that now it needs help recovering. And so when we think about that, someone that has just made continual stress hormone or cortisol to the point where now they're depleted in it, or they're surging in how much they're making, which causes a lot of inflammation in the body, we can give oxytocin to that person. If you think of a teeter-totter or a seesaw that you sit on, you know, with your friend when you're yeah. little and you're on the playground, oxytocin and cortisol share that inverse relationship. So as cortisol goes up, oxytocin goes down. As oxytocin goes up, cortisol goes down. Of course, we want to be at an equal weight on each side. Mm -hmm. So we want to be in balance. But we live very busy, stressful lives. Yeah. So it's we'd be hard-pressed to find someone 
who isn't at least somewhat in adrenal burnout phase or hasn't been there at one point in their life. So oxytocin can be a good thing to think about to replenish in that type of guest to give them back some of their ability to manage stress. Another one I wanted to point out, because I see this a lot, especially being female, is I have a lot of friends and guests that we work with that have what we call period migraines. And in and around the menstrual cycle, for women who are still having menses, mm -hmm. they will get really bad headaches just mm -hmm. prior to their cycle. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that this happens is due to fluctuation of the hormones, which can cause a lot of anxiety for women just prior to their cycle. Oxytocin can work wonders in helping to manage that anxiety and the fluctuation of mood just prior to menses. And I've seen that work really well for a lot of our guests. Great. Okay. So once someone is on oxytocin, how quickly can they get a resolution and feel better? Yeah, it's a really common question. And we want to know if we're going to implement something new, how fast it's going to work. Right. So with oxytocin, depending on what we are using it for, it's going to determine how long it takes the person to respond. So when we use it for insomnia or for anxiety, it's going to work faster for somebody. Because they're going to dose it just prior to that time when they're trying to improve their sleep or trying to improve their mood at a time when they might be anxious. They're probably going to notice a quicker benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're using it for something like headaches or to bring cortisol back into balance, those types of things don't occur overnight. So they also don't get fixed overnight. So rather than just expecting resolution after a couple doses, you should expect days, maybe even weeks until you really start to notice a big difference. Okay. Great. Um, and are there different types of formulations of oxytocin? And if so, what would they be? Right. So at Physician's Preference, we offer a few different ones. We have the nasal spray, which is compounded, and then also the sublingual tablet, the tablet that just goes directly under your tongue and it mm -hmm. dissolves in about a minute or two. The reason that we choose to go with one dosage form over the other primarily depends on, one, what we're treating, mm -hmm. and two, the guest preference. I mean, if someone is traveling all the time, they are probably going to do better taking the tablets with them. Those have a much longer expiration date. If they're out of the country on work or something like that, we really want to be sure that we're accommodating the guest schedule. If we're trying to address something that's going on in the brain mm. and we really want, or headaches, for example, we really want that medication to get delivered to the site of action, we would choose a nasal spray because it's going to go directly through the nose and start to come in contact with the blood brain barrier. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so what um, what are some important dosing considerations that you might have for oxytocin? Oxytocin is really interesting on the way that the body responds to it when you give it through, you give it exogenously, which means you're basically taking it in from the outside. You're taking it in medication form, mm -hmm. something else other than what your body is making. Oxytocin behaves in a positive feedback pattern which is different than a lot of other hormones or other medications respond. And what that means is that when you take oxytocin, your body has oxytocin receptors all over the body, from head to toe, on the organs that are important for reproduction, on the heart and the brain. And so you've got oxytocin receptors everywhere. Your body remembers how to bind it up. So when you take it in medication form, the body goes, oh, I remember how to make that. I'm going to start making more of it. So what's neat about that is when we start dosing in patients, we usually are able to drop their dose down because they need less over time rather than more over time. Wow. So patients that have, let's take an adult patient, for example. I think this is a really interesting illustration that are well into adulthood but have suffered severe childhood trauma. That childhood trauma is a major stressor. So again, it knocks their cortisol out of whack mm -hmm. and they can become very deficient in oxytocin. Years, decades down the line after they've experienced that childhood trauma, studies show that their oxytocin receptors still are there, waiting to be bound up, waiting to be dosed with oxytocin. So an adult, child, an adult who has been a survivor of childhood trauma or a victim of childhood trauma mm -hmm. will still respond to oxytocin dose later in life. So that just shows us how resilient the body is, how much the body wants to heal 
and remembers how to heal. So it's encouraging because a lot of times we can go down in the dose over time with our guests. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like a terrific um, resolution. If someone, uh, one of our guests wanted to get oxytocin or be prescribed oxytocin, how would they go about that? It does require a prescription okay. and you will need to get one from your physician. And if your physician is not familiar with how to write for oxytocin or for either of those dosage forms I mentioned, the tablet or the nasal spray, then just have them call the pharmacy. We'll give them more information about how to write that prescription. And also depending on what we're treating, the dose will change too. So we have a couple different strengths of each of those dosage forms. And again, it depends on what we're treating. So we'll need to provide some, some dosing guidance to the prescriber as well. Okay, and that's Physician's Preference Pharmacy, right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, and how would they reach <laughs> Physician's Preference Pharmacy? So they can call us directly at 281-828-9088, or you can visit our website, which is physiciansprefererx.com. Call us up, visit our website, call and talk to any of our pharmacists, myself included, and we'll be happy to discuss all the benefits of oxytocin with you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys found this valuable. And if you have any questions, we look forward to speaking with you. At Physicians Preference Pharmacy, we understand that the quality of your compounded medications directly affects the way you feel, which is why we believe that your pharmacy should specialize in compounding medications while also delivering extraordinary hospitality and guest service. We believe that both patients and prescribers should accept nothing less than consistency and quality from their compounding pharmacy. This is why we've implemented some of the strictest quality standards in compounding, exceeding standard requirements, achieving PCAB accreditation, which is the Pharmacy Compounding Accreditation Board, an organization that sets the highest standards in compounding pharmacy regarding the safety, cleanliness, and quality of your compounded prescriptions. Because of our commitment to complete health and wellness, we are dedicated to making your medications free of lactose, parabens, artificial sweeteners, and any unnecessary dyes, binders, or fillers present in many other medications, offering you the cleanest products possible. Information provided on this program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution Advice advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this program is at the listener's discretion.